fancy intro music. Yeah. Woohoo. Welcome back today to actually getting a roadmap. Like it's here. Finally, after a one month plus delay, we have the roadmap going into 2023. Now, for those of you players who may be new to Star Trek Fleet Command or unfamiliar with the roadmap process, historically, we've gotten a roadmap out about every six months, giving a rough idea of what could be coming to the game. Now, this particular roadmap actually covers things that happened over the past year, which is a first. Got a little bit of a recap system, which I'll be honest, we're going to wait to the end to cover the recap because... I think y'all understand why we're going to cover recap later, but we'll cover some of the new additions that are potentially coming. And I'm really curious on how y'all feel about all these things like positive, negative, excited, anything. So be ready to drop your comments. And I want to hear comments about everything that you think. So like if you end up leaving five comments in this video, no big deal. Yeah, I'll read them all. I've been trying to do that a lot more lately. So let's start with Fleet Commanders, and I'm going to give, I'm going to read through it, and then I'm going to give my thoughts on how I think it's probably constructed. Now, this is not Rev saying secretly that I'm working with game design, and I've designed this myself. That's not what I'm saying. Just I'm going to give my thoughts based on well over 10,000 hours played in this game and four years. So, wow. It's still weird to say that out loud. Anyway, during the last few years, you probably noticed how your fleet or ships have grown. Your officers need additional support in commanding this large fleet of ships. In response, this need a new role is being created Fleet Commanders. Fleet Commanders gives you a new way to enhance your station and fleet, hence the most impactful and iconic characters from the Star Trek universe take center stage. They will bring additional power and strategy to all of your fleet while commanding it from safely on your station. Now, the first ones that they say that will be included in this are Captain Spock, as you can see here. Shout out, Spock. Uh, Admiral Kirk, so it seems like we're going into the movies here, so Wrath of Khan, you know, search for Spock, etc., And then a very special assimilated officer. The only special assimilated officers, you can really name them on one hand. I'll start with the most obvious at the top. Locutus, Seven of Nine, Hugh, Borg Queen, but not really an officer. But Hugh did, if we're including Picard, Hugh, I mean, anyway, technically, if we're really just going straight officers, Locutus. Now, if they're just saying officers as an in general character in the game, we could go a lot of different places. But those are probably the top three known Borg officers. So uh, none of those are in the game. Locutus is not in the game. Seven of Nine is not in the game. And Hughes is not in the game. So just a thought. We'll see. So this is expected coming at the beginning of 2023. So expect this in quarter one, January, February, etc. As far as what it is, because it does say work in progress. I'll be honest. It just looks like another research tree, but that doesn't make it a negative. Here's why. The Bajoran faction is an extended research tree. And to be honest, that's okay. That's really not that big of a deal. I know some of the immediate concerns are going to be, well, you can already see there's multiple new currencies involved with this and everybody knows how great we love currencies and new currencies, but new research trees and stuff aren't bad depending on what they do. I mean, see a dilithium node right there and if this actually makes it to where you can hold a decent amount of dilithium when your station is getting raided well maybe that is good because there's not really a lot of research that does that now if this is a bunch of power creep as in research that it simply overlaps with already existing stuff like there's another 300 percent hole bonus in there maybe not as exciting but i think this is something to look forward to and does give you a little bit more variety but i don't know if they're really going to be officers as much as it's going to be special fleet commanders you recruit and then decide which one you want to you know dive into maybe it's even uh, something like a um almost like a faction path where you choose which one you're going to go into and if you back out you lose it maybe that's how it works i'm very curious to see but not a bad thing hailing frequencies now this one we'll see galaxy chat is a great place to communicate with your fellow commanders but have you ever wished you could hail some of the ships you meant or you meet in the vast galaxy this has been something that's actually been discussed since 2019. So before anybody says, oh, well, who even asked for this? Actually, quite a few of us. This it, has been asked for before. Especially when Eve Echoes came out and had its, like, system chat. Really had a lot of people in the game asking for it. Uh, you could probably guess some of the obvious ideas we plan to introduce near launch because they're going to use emojis as part of the communication process. And keep in mind that when it comes to chat rules and laws and with how minors can be in the game, etc., you're probably very limited in what you can say 
in this game, but still could be interesting. My first concern is lag. To be honest, it is. My first concern is lag in the game. Is this going to make it worse? But still, I'm not saying the feature is bad. As long as it's not the primary feature in a month, I think it'll be okay. So, yeah, I don't see that as a bad thing, and it has been something asked for. Now, this is going to be a big one, game and lag performance. Uh, basically, it's just several paragraphs talking about how lag is difficult to overcome. I'm not about to, you know, enforce this video, go through a flame fest, but... This is good, and I love this level of transparency. Kudos to Star Trek Fleet Command. I mean, if there's anything that deserves a like in this video, this level of transparency does. So, well, we've already released. We just had the Battle Engine update uh, last week. Daily reset server scaling. That's already been released this year and getting another one coming, as you'll see in a second. Alliance contribution lag. That has improved, and I can note that. In terms of in testing and upcoming, so hopefully pretty soon, we've got a battle lag improvement, which is nice. Hopefully that is really helping with uh, territory battles and big raids. It's something that they've discussed here recently. And refinery and shop lag. Hopefully that has to do with currency cleanup because that's a big problem with that. Uh, let's see. In development, battle log phase two improvements, as well as daily, daily reset scaling phase two. And then eventually coming on the roadmap, probably the end of this year because this map seems to be covering most of 2023 instead of just the next six months but maybe i could be wrong it says in the next few months system load time improvements client loading time improvements and event scoring lag improvements so those are currently on that and i appreciate the level of transparency there next up game grinding and loot now this one is okay i've actually have had conversations with people inside scopely about this several conversations long-winded conversations that's good i mean that that level of talking is probably good and and many of you have just blown up every content creator every moderator any community manager you can find on discord about lag and game grind and how much is it. i made a whole video about the average time for a player committing to their game grind loops is anywhere from two to four hours a day when it used to be 30 minutes which left you a lot more time to just have fun and they're working on that now doesn't say exactly how they're going to do that. But there's a big hint sitting right here with an exocomp. Now, I'm okay with exocomps assisting as long as it doesn't do a couple things. One, it's not paywalled exocomps. If you make a grind improvement that's paywalled, you're really going to start a forest fire. And this has got to be a band-aid. It can't be the permanent fix. The permanent fix is scaling out older content. Like, there should be no reason that you're still grinding Borg at all if you're in the 50s you know i mean and, and more and more players get into the 40s and 50s until a vadar a comes out and there's actually new content there's no reason for players who've been here for years to be going to these level 33 systems and chasing borg pro you know the franklin is phasing out for a lot of people you know the discovery besides it being a taxi you know the grind for it especially with new players the grind taking as long as it does if there's exocomps that actually expedite that process and give more loot drops for that and that's good if it's just a, hey, spend X amount and get these, or they're part of the RNG of an already convoluted structure and very full exo structure, I'm not sure how good that'll help, but I do think that it's okay as a band-aid. I'm curious your thoughts as well. Again, your opinions are welcome. I'm simply giving my opinions based on my experience. That doesn't mean that I'm right or wrong, and y'all are more than welcome to disagree, so please do comment down below. But I do think that exos can be a good way to start off the process as long as it's not the long-term answer now the right of ascension this is very interesting to me. in mid 2023 so we're talking q2 maybe q3 plan to unleash a new challenge the right of ascension this will involve testing the strength of your fleet against increasingly difficult attacks players may present with a series of progressively tougher challenges which they can compete in order to earn rewards push as far as you can to show your commanders how powerful you are and this seems like an achievement system which could be an addition to field training. That's my first thought. So I like this. This is something to get excited about for me. I think this is something the game needs. The game needs to broaden horizontally, not vertically. And what I mean by that is the goal of this game can't be constantly pushing you to level up because there's nothing there. Like there's nothing in the 50s and 60s. There's nothing at 60 besides a Dedederix, an Enterprise D, and a Rotari. There's no in-game content. There's no special dungeons. There's nothing. So the game needs to broaden itself and thicken up a little bit so that you have more to do and more reason to spend time in the game, spend money in the game, 
and stretching out horizontally does that. And I think this type of system, an achievement system, where there's things that I can go for at level 35 or 42 or 47, et cetera, helps you expand a little bit. It's okay to sit at 35, 39, 42, 43, wherever you are, and not necessarily for a camping spot, just in terms of enjoying the game and having more to do without this constant feel of you have to level up to get anything, even though there's nothing there. FOMO, this is giving you something in terms of a goal-oriented type system. So I think this can be fantastic for the game, for long-term players and new players. So yeah, I'm excited about that. I think that's great. Artifacts is also interesting name could be changing. Uh, we're looking to add new ways for players to augment their bases so they have more tactical choices. I mean, currently the tactical situations on bases is pretty vanilla. I mean, it's you we already know what say gun A does versus gun C in, in terms of their mitigation, their damage, etc. We've been tracking that for a long time. Um I'm curious what all this ends up being. It says it's still in early development, so probably don't expect this till Q3, Q4. But still, I'm very curious what this could be. You know, uh, artifacts in other games can often be used to give power bonuses or, you know, special tools and things like that. Interesting. I, I'm, again, maybe this could be something that actually helps with the grind. I know it mentions specifically to do things like improve your tactical choices and new ways to optimize how you explore and battle across the galaxy. But what if you could collect a certain artifact that made it to where, I don't know, you, you ground out less, like you hit less hostiles to complete certain tasks, or maybe it improved the rate that, you know, loot boxes dropped, which they better improve loot boxes before they improve how the rate they drop. You know, I don't know. <coughs> it's an interesting concept. Not necessarily one that I'm jumping up and down about, but at the same time, I'm not negative about it at all. I think it's a lot of potential for good there. So we'll keep it moving. And then finally, 2023 IP and shows. Lastly, the arc we plan for next year includes some fan favorites, plus new more recent shows but the only recent ones they haven't done prodigy fantastic animated show if your kids aren't into it you should be into it picard really the only thing. they've done lower decks they've done discovery they've done strange new world so you've got those two left you also got voyager you got enterprise and the movies so can't share a lot of details yet but the small hand we'll have in the first arc in 2023 will bring back an old geometrically obsessed enemy that's obviously the Borg. So we got a hint that the Borg are coming. If you scroll back up here, Fleet Commander says, this is launching early 2023 and a very special simulate officer. I'm moving more and more and more to a Borg arc built around Locutus. Just a thought. Now, real quick before we wrap up this video, we're gonna go over what happened in 2022. I'll have a video dedicated to this, but I think it's only fair to go ahead and do it here because they did it here. So rules of acquisition, the Ferengi arc, Fisha got released, Treasury, crossover leaderboards. Two of those three I thought were good things. I think the Fisha was a good addition. The Devor had definitely outpaced itself. The Devor needs better sourcing for, the, um, for parts. So the people, especially new the game, can level it up and scrap it for the Fisha. Treasury I thought was a great addition to the game. Crossover leaderboards, for the most part, which ended up turning into incursions, has been kind of floppy. It's resulted in just a bunch of leaderboards and which are just spend events and incursions has kind of fallen off but i'm hoping in 2023 it recovers so i would say two out of three is a pretty good for that arc lower decks cerritos below deck officers was both a win cerritos maybe not terribly exciting but now with solar armadas even more useful than before and the lower deck officers as a series are fantastic whether you're just including the lower decks officers or the newer ones that just came out like odo and kira very good in fact i think they added a good level to the game in some ways, they added power creep. In some ways, they didn't. But I thought Lower Decks was good. Strange New Worlds, Infinite Incursions. Even as a PvP guy. Like, I desperately want PvP to be great again. And I think it can be. But <clears throat> Mantis Ship was good. Especially now that it's been fixed. You can actually enjoy it now. Galaxy Tree Expansion. <clears throat> so, one out of three there. But, so far, if we're, if we're keeping score, we went two out of three. Then we went the next one. We got two out of two. So, now we're... Four to one in terms of positive. Now we're five to three, positive over negative. And then D Space Nine, in terms of what the highlight, they left out some good stuff here. Like they left out the Amalgam, which was a fantastic addition to the game. The Amalgam needs lots of love. The Amalgam should have been listed above. That was a fantastic ad. But anyway, five and three. I'm going to give it the Amalgam. Six and three. D Space Nine, Alliance Starbase, flop so far. Nobody's really cared about it. So um, six and four. 
USS Defiant, to me, it's a positive. Yes, it's still the Defiant. Yes, it needs improvements. But overall, to me, y'all can disagree, comment. Please do. I'm going to give a 7 and 4. Automated defenses, that fell flat. Nobody's really cared or used it that I've seen. I've, I've pulled dozens of servers. And sure, people got it, but not many. So 7 and 5 on that one, 7 and 5. But again, comment. You disagree, agree. I don't care. I'm here for it. Uh, armory building was a positive. It is power creep, but still positive. So I'm going to give it eight and five. And then espionage five event. Kind of like neutral on that one. It, it just didn't have enough communication. It didn't have enough buildup. Um, this just wasn't enough to get everybody excited about it. I think overall it was good, but it just lasted so long. There just wasn't this continual buildup from Scopelite. There wasn't community posts about it on Discord, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, etc. Uh, even content creators kind of talked about it here and there. DJ talked about it a little bit more than I did, but even he wasn't talking about it every week. It was just kind of like, oh, we have espionage this week. So there you go. Yeah. So I'm going to give it, what? We had eight, five, and one. We're going to give that a neutral. And I think there's some things that I got left off here, but overall, a positive year. But I'd say this, 2021 was much better overall than 2022. 2022 has some really good stuff in it. And hopefully 2023 can return to the 2021 format, which is when I'll say the game hit a peak. That doesn't mean that 2022 crashed and burned. I still think there was more good than bad. And it's easier to remember the bad because most of the bad is coming here. DS9. This was supposed to be like, oh man, we're, we're saving the game, even though the game wasn't dying. And most of that has just fallen on its face. But for the most part, the year had some really good stuff in it for free to play, for spenders, etc. It just kind of ended really poorly. So hopefully 2023 kicks us back in the right direction. 2021, I thought overall was a good year. So this video went way longer than anticipated, but I think that's okay because of what we're going through. And I want all of your opinions, but more than importantly, like this video. Thank you for another year of being with me and putting up with my stupidity. And thank you enough. Thank you. Live long and prosper. Stay safe with their space cowboys. Deuces, that's me. Catch you on the next one. We're outie. Good roadmap. An even better outro than the intro. For the empire and glory to your house.